Now here's the structure of DNA. And DNA consists of chromatin. Chromatin are thread-like strands of DNA that also contain histone proteins and RNA. And they can condense into bodies called chromosomes when the cell starts to divide. And you can see the base pairing of DNA as DNA coils together and becomes double-stranded. Now the process of protein synthesis is with DNA replication. And there's various steps, transcription and translation. Transcription is within the cell nucleus and translation is in the cell cytoplasm. Now, the steps of protein synthesis are outlined here. The DNA template is used to make the RNA strands. Immature RNA is modified to form uh, messenger RNA. Messenger RNA leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pores. And then translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Ribosomal RNA binds to the messenger RNA and reads the codons or triplets. Transfer RNA transfers the appropriate amino acids to the ribosome and proofreads it as anticodon. Amino acids are then covalently bonded together by peptide bonds to form a polypeptide. And then the polypeptide can take on the different levels of shape that we talked about previously. So let's look at the process of transcription in a little bit more detail. So transcription is where we go from DNA to messenger RNA. Now DNA is bound together in a helix and the helix needs to unwind. And there's an enzyme that does that helicase. It untwists the DNA double helix and exposes the complementary base um, chains. There is a Y-shaped site of replication known as the replication fork. And then each nucleotide strand can serve as a template for building a new complementary strand. DNA polymerase uh, reads the strands. There is a continuous reading of the leading strand where it is synthesized. And then the lagging strand is synthesized in short segments that are then spliced together later on via DNA ligase. This process is called semi-conservative replication because two DNA molecules are formed from the original. And then we have to process the RNA. Remember we have messenger RNA and messenger RNA is spliced out removing the introns which are the non-coding regions of DNA. DNA has both coding regions and non-coding regions. So in transcription, RNA polymerase oversees the synthesis of mRNA that you saw previously. And then in translation is the next step after RNA has been processed to produce a spliced form of RNA containing only the coding regions, which are the exons. Translation converts that base sequence of nucleic acids into the amino acid sequence of proteins. And this involves messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. Messenger RNA attaches to a sm small ribosomal subunit that moves along the messenger RNA to the start codon. 
the large ribosomal unit attaches, forming now what we know as a functional ribosome. The anticodon of transfer RNA binds to its complementary codon and adds the appropriate amino acid to the now growing protein. New amino acids are added by other transfer RNAs as the ribosome moves along ribosomal RNA until we reach a stop codon. And you can see that shown here.